What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PPC Den Podcast, your source for all things Amazon advertising, Amazon PPC. We've been podcasting about Amazon advertising for such a long time. I think this is, formally this is episode 143. However, if you go to Apple Podcasts, there's about 160 episodes on there. So super stoked for this episode. And on today's show, I have a very special guest, Naomi. Naomi, uh, we were doing some prep and then I heard this amazing rain coming from outside, thunder rolling in, setting this calm mood as we finish out summer, as we move into fall, just having this beautiful rain in the background. What's up, Naomi? <laughs> Thank you so much for enriching our, our audience's ears today with this beautiful rain in the background. Thanks What's for coming up? on the show. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for, for inviting me. I think even if this was enough, you know, the rain, I think it was enough and we can like <laughs> stop now. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. This We can just forget talking about growing on Amazon and instead have a nice, relaxing, uh, like <laughs> soothing sounds episode. You know, marketing on Amazon can be very anxiety producing. So it's nice to let's just have like five seconds of this rain here. And I cannot That's stop good stuff. Laughing. That's brilliant. I love it. Yeah, I should say I've been up for a long time, been working very hard. So I'm recording this at a time that I normally don't record episodes. So I might be a little extra chatty today. So I hope you don't mind, uh, Naomi or listeners. Um, Naomi, I think you have such a fascinating story. Uh, if anyone searches your name, which they should, they'll see that you're quite an accomplished musician as well. You have. A Spotify with songs that people can listen to. Um, I love it. That's awesome. And I'm so, ex I'm, I'm really eager. And why don't you just bring people up to speed in terms of who you are uh, and your experience with Amazon? Are you a marketer, a business owner? Tell me a little bit more about that. Hello, everyone. I know the answer, but my pe people might not. People might not know. <laughs> of course, of course. So, um, hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be on the show. I actually, let me address it like this. Hello, dear listener. It's a pleasure to have mm -hmm. you here. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so my name is Naomi. I am a music producer. I have, I mean, I have a background in music production for the past eight, nine years as I was uh, chatting with Michael right before recording. That's what I've done uh, so far. I, I started Amazon two years ago and since then I fell in love with Ecom and with, as I was saying, Michael as well, PPC and marketing and everything that is around this topic. I am loving it. It's very, very exciting, I would say. And as I was saying, saying Michael as well, I cannot breathe, I cannot sleep, I cannot eat. I'm loving it. So I think that that's good. I'm super passionate, as you can see. So I kind mm -hmm. of like told you everything about my whole life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and you are the co-host of another exceptional podcast, uh, Wizards of Ecom, mm -hmm. uh, which is awesome, um, which is a really cool podcast. You guys talk a lot about different topics, and it, it seems you have a really big breadth of topics that you talk about, uh, whereas this show is all about Amazon PPC. I think it's really cool how you've touched on a lot of different topics. Um, how has that journey been for you? Just like being able to get exposed to so many different topics every week. I think it is, has been really great. I'm loving it. Um, I think that I was very, very nervous first when I started because Carlos was, so Carlos, Carlos Ayres is the main host of the show and he started this like he was in, I'm a, I think I like, one year or something like that beforehand you know and i was a, an avid listener of the show beforehand and it was like wow such a like pleasure for me to actually join and become a co-host and now we're just really crushing it so as, I, as you were saying so i'm super super stoked to like bring all these high quality guests you have been one of those high quality guests to to mm -hmm. our listeners you know and um it's been doing great and i love it and as you said i think the only reason why we are like kind of like all over the place or not necessarily all over the place, but we didn't really niche down as you, for example, on PPC, we kind of niche down on e-commerce and especially uh, that is a topic that is like super, super relatable to everyone. Yet it's like it's very like multilateral 
I would say, in that mm-hmm. said that right. So it's like it, mm-hmm. it. You really have to master many things. It's not only PPC. For like for example, for you, PPC related, you know. So I think that's uh, helping us to one find easier guests because it's like many more topics. You know, it's not one pro, but like many to choose from. And the second, it's um, yeah, as I was saying, unfortunately, we cannot afford as Amazon or as e-com sellers to master only one topic. You know, so. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's why I think this makes sense. Absolutely. And when I asked you before we started recording on, you know, what are you most excited to share with Badger Nation out there for what you feel like could be one thing that people could finish up the episode and go straight to their keyboards and start mapping something out, actually doing something that would improve their Amazon marketing. We're going to touch on that in just a few seconds. So I'd love, I know what the answer is, but I love what you're about to share. It resonates so much with me. It's what I've done and I have tried to do with Ad Badger, which is, because you know, you hear so much with Amazon marketing, PPC, SEO, product page optimization. You hear about sending Google ads traffic or Facebook ads traffic to your listings. You hear a lot about that. But one thing that I think people that I know who just absolutely crush it, I don't know why I never, I haven't thought about this in a while, but like it still works and it's still pretty great is building communities around your industry to sell your product. Uh, and I'm so excited to touch on this. And it feels like to have a show like about Ad Badger, which is so like analytical, let's talk about numbers. Like you can't even listen to the show if you're driving in the car because you need to like stop and get a calculator out uh, in order to like follow along and crunch the numbers. This is like a, uh, it's really like hitting, like hitting my brain in a way that's like so like, whatever side of your brain is the like right brain, this is like very left brain. And like, I really love this approach because it's going to be something that I don't think a lot of our listeners, maybe if they they haven't done, they maybe have not considered it in a while. So building communities. Uh, I think this is such a fascinating thing um, because you often see communities online and then you always wonder, like, what's the point of that? Like, why is there a community for, like, dog moms? Like, what is the point of, like, building a community, sharing memes about, you know, what it's like being a dog mom? Uh, and then you piece it together with, oh, you know, that could be an avenue for you to sell your products. It's like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And especially if you like being, like the industry that, it in, like, that it's in, like, it makes total sense. So take me back to the beginning why did you first get the idea to launch community for your products? So first I launched the community, then the product idea came along. I think, I, so you, yeah, does it make sense? So, so you launched the community correct. even before you had product in, in hand selling on Amazon, mm-hmm. um, which is number one, like that seems so smart. You know, so many people are panicked when they first start on Amazon, they're like, oh man, like what is my minimum order that I need to make in order to get this product in the first place? You know, I need to go scrounge up some money. And meanwhile, it is like free to start a Facebook group or free to start a Facebook page or Instagram page or TikTok, whatever it ends up being. All these things are free to start and you could get ahead. I'm just like really excited by this idea. You can get ahead of your marketing even before you have your product, you can get a head start on it while it's in development. Um, and I assume that's exactly what you were thinking of as well. Yeah, exactly. And I think like some sometimes you can be very conscious about like in a conscious way just to put together, okay, this is the strategy. This is how I'm going to build up a community and then I'm going to bring the product. Like I, as, as much as you said that it's a, such a smart way, I honestly wish that I would have had that marketer mindset who would said, no, I'm bringing the community. This is the way. This is like everything planned out a strategy. For me, it was mainly, hey, I have a cool cat. Let's make an Instagram account for my cat, you know? Mm-hmm. And from there on, I've seen, hey, it's not only my cat is cool, but there are like so many other cat parents or dog parents or whatever, like parents of a pet, you know, who adore their pet, you know, it's the same way. Okay. If you are, for example, if you have a kid, you know, obviously that's going to be like 
all the pictures that you're going to post with it's going to be the kid you know it's just like this is somehow like becoming an influencer without actually knowing that you're going to become an influencer you know so that's what i did and yeah go on and can you just define what you when you say building a community? I have an idea in my head, but how do you, what, how do you define this word? Like, wh- what did your community look like? What are the components of it? What did you do? Like, what actually is a community? A community is a, a group of like-minded people who have the same passion, who are fighting for the same uh, cause, let's say, and who mm-hmm. just like go crazy whenever someone is sharing something that they love. I think that's that's mm-hmm. the best way I can share a community. And also where you are offering uh, overrated word with value, value meaning support in this scenario. So community for, for the value that you want to offer is support for stuff, being there, sharing them. So if, if we're talking about like, and I'm curious too, like, what is the difference? Like if, let's say I wanted to, let's say my audience is on Instagram and I go out and I create an Instagram page, I don't know, houseplant dads. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's for guys that have a lot of houseplants in their home. And if I wanted to start that, I obviously would start posting pictures. Uh, I would start doing things would like there need to be a person behind this too like do i also need to become the face of the houseplant dads or is a community slightly different where it's not so much like an inf- i think we all know what an influencer is it's like a single person telling you how to live life or sharing their life with you in a certain way and how does that like i'm curious on the differences between like becoming an influencer in an industry versus having a community page for an industry you asked a really really cool question that i myself haven't even thought about it but actually it makes total sense what you're saying so for example by the way brand that the the guy with, with the house plan because that's a really cool idea i think it has mm-hmm. lots of potential okay, yeah. getting back to what we were saying Man- um, manly manly house plants there yes, you go I've got yes it. yes mm-hmm. go to uspto let's see if someone got it <laughs> <The trademark>. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. no but seriously so what you were saying i think it's super super important because I have also have built a community, but I also have for our cat um, their own Instagram account and they are influencers. And you just pointed out something super, super interesting. I think that it has to do a lot with uh, people like to see, people like to know about people and like to see what they are sharing in the same time. For example, if I'm building a community, it can be like different types of, types of, of communities. For example, what I built and I am mastering, let's put it that way, with all the shameless like, who am I, you know, aside. Mm-hmm. What I love doing, there you go, uh, is building communities, communities that are curating content, you know? So that's one type of community that's going to share mm-hmm. everything that is not theirs, basically, right? That is one type. The second type of community is going to be basically what any blogger is doing. They are just taking content and they are sharing their own stuff. That is somehow the influential part of Mm -hmm. of the community part, you know? And in that case, it would be very relatable if it's a person behind or like a a pet behind or something behind that you can relate to it. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? Yeah, so it seems like the definitions can be you know, maybe a little bit, they can blend from one to the next. So I can imagine, you know, you could do some kind of combination approach as well. Yeah. Uh, almost like content marketing where you're like creating content yourself and then you're using that to build a community or you are, uh, you know, repurposing others content to build a community around that. Exactly. Um, so that's really, so you went with sort of the more of the first one. Um, and then, Did you know when you started, because there's more than one way to monetize a community than just, you know, with physical products. Did you know you wanted to sell your physical product when you started the community? Or is that something that sort of came after you already had the community in tow? Uh, So first, how I found this community approach and building communities and so on, it's uh, I took a course, Amazon affiliate course. Uh, not the best. I think it was the best to under, for me to understand, hey, actually there's a, money, a way to make money and there's a, another mm-hmm. way to think about how to make uh, Amazon or how, uh, sorry, how to make Instagram because I started the community on Instagram become a product for you. 
Does it make sense? Mm-hmm. So it's not anymore only that, the Instagram profile, but that because it becomes a product for you. And then you're going to advertise that. Maybe not, uh, you're not going to pay like paid ads, but you're going to advertise it because also this is like preparing content all, all the time, answering to into the community, like replying, like talking there. That's also a type of advertisement. So mm-hmm. maybe I wasn't uh, really knowing exactly what I want to do. I knew that I want to learn affiliate marketing and this was a great way for me. Hey, why not build it up? It's working, not working. It doesn't matter. I'm learning, you know? So I think for me, it was like, I want to learn. Yeah. I mean, when there is an audience, like the world is really your oyster. Um, And when you have an audience, you can really circumvent a lot of other roadblocks that a lot of times people have to muscle through. They need to drill through this rock in the road, this boulder in the road. They need to like take their time and drill through it. And simply put, like when you have a big audience, you can just get around things really easy. Yes. So, bef- you know, many, many years ago, like one of my first things that I did in the world of digital marketing was I worked at a surfing website. And it was great because you know, anytime a Google SEO thing happened, like, boom, we already had, like, this was a little bit before, like, social became what it is today. So, like, we had a really big email list. And, like, we were able to just, like, bounce over any speed bump in Google rankings so easily because, you know, we that was, like, the number two traffic source was, like, email marketing for us. Yeah. So when you're able to just have an audience, I mean, there's a reason why, you know, kids on social media who have millions of followers if you just have a community you are able to monetize it in so many different ways Um, and an amazon product is one of them Um, and i imagine for a lot of people that are listening that really like love their industry and like love their community and maybe they're their own customer you know they're scratching their own inch they're solving their own need What's up, cat? <laughs> <They're solid. laughs> hey, That's the star. <laughs> that, that, that guy has more followers than you and I together on Instagram. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so this is the influencer cat. Yeah, right, that's but, right there. Yeah, that's the influencer. Yeah. So, so yeah, so like when you have an audience, you're able to do so many things with it and go in any direction that mm-hmm. you'd like. So it makes total sense. And, and I mean, in terms of the practicality of that like is it really as simple as you know building an audience which i assume you know (laughs) i so i think it makes total sense so you found that with this community you're able to basically like hey cpcs have gone up on amazon in 2021 Mm -hmm. a lot but you have this other traffic source that you can almost like circumvent that issue a bit Uh, and is is that generally how you found having this like golden source of traffic be able to like bounce around some of these dips in organic or ppc issues or anything like that yes yeah, so most definitely as you were saying also like uh, maybe most of the time like you were giving the example with email lists and so on for example as as much as i would love to see yes i i was super like i knew exactly how to do that and how to build up an email list unfortunately that might not have happened because i knew how to build up a community but i wasn't a marketer i wasn't thinking like a marketer you know mm. and now as you say hey a cost is high what am i doing so that was my first thing i already am sitting on a gold mine and it's funny that you were also saying that you actually have people who can who you can bring your product to right uh, i was mm-hmm. having um after the in-person meetups you know with um the wizards you know after like it, we have each saturday we have meetups in person you know it's super cool and afterwards we're going to a place called bonefish and that's well that's actually when the action is happening because that's the community actually you know mm-hmm. everyone's starting talking and so on so to make the story short uh, we were just talking about okay instagram and i said okay I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do. My acres is so, so high. I like, I'm losing money, you know, what to do now. And from, imagine this from a product that did really, really well. And within a year, as I was saying, almost doubled, double and a half 
the A class, you know, and it's like what to do next, you know. And uh, a friend, Ramon, if you're li- listening to this, like shout out to you. So a friend was saying like, hey, you already have a community, like what are you doing, you know? And I was like, heck yeah, like why did I neglect that, you know? So then I was like, hey, we already have these people here. Let's just reach out. Do you want to, to like review my product? Do you want to see? Do you want to, you know, like the influencer stuff that everything that I knew exactly how to do, but I didn't use it because I was so focused on Amazon like learning Amazon, understanding Amazon, because Amazon is like a beast that's changing from second to second, you know? As you were saying, hey, like anyone listening or dear listener who's like listening right now, be aware that Amazon is just a sales channel. And if you, you can be like amazing at it and like have service or Michael or Ed Badger and so on, have people who are brilliant at it. But at some point, even they cannot do more because Amazon, it's a pay to play game or it started to become a play to play game, you know? And if you don't have like a backup plan, as I was saying with the community, with build up, building up like people who are really raging, raving fans of your product, really? Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. Okay, so then it's going to be very, very hard for you, you know, even if, and I'm saying this and I'm talking from someone's perspective who, as I was saying, really, wanted to learn and really learned a ton of things during a year and a half, two years, you know, and I've seen, I'm give, I've given my best and it's not working anymore. So if you are not having a community and if you're not thinking right now, once that you stopped listening to the podcast, okay, what can I do? As, as Michael was saying, what should I do right now? Sit down, take some notes, take, okay, what do I have right now already here, here in my pocket that I can use, you know? And mm-hmm. if the community can be that, make it possible because otherwise you know it's going to be hard really really hard it's as i was saying pay to play game and each platform i also imagine like just from the things that an entrepreneur needs to deal with on amazon uh you know especially a solopreneur with so much you know bureaucracy and and things to to hoops to jump through on amazon i have to imagine that this the community side of things is probably like the most fun is it like i can imagine like if i was selling like bird watching binoculars and i had a instagram page about like cool birds like how fun is that um i have to imagine this is probably one of the most fun things that you've done in your entrepreneurial journey most definitely and i also like would add there so i think that there are like different type of sellers once they are going to enter Let's talk about only the Amazon platform because most people are referring to themselves as Amazon sellers. We're not talking about income sellers, we're talking Amazon sellers, right? And once that they get in and they might might have been sold on a course as I was as well, they were like, okay, just find a product that's going to make money, blah, 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 you know? And Mike, you, you actually were touching a super strong point. If you're not 100% passionate about this, it won't work, you know? You might mm-hmm. you might outsource this, you might have a VA who's doing this, you might, you know, you might do all that, but honestly, if you're not 100% there, like your heart is not 100% there, passionate about the community, maybe not about the product, but passionate about the community, it will reflect. And also you cannot find the words, the right words to talk to influencers, mm-hmm. to talk to anyone else, you know? And I think most people, what they are missing is, yes, they are building up a really nice community and they have, they're really sitting on the gold mine, but they don't have the attachment, the they cannot talk to, to to someone who's there. Like, for example, you're a ppc right? And you're talking brilliantly with everyone who's coming on the podcast and you can like, it, it clicks because that's your passion. Mm-hmm. That's like something is like, you're not forcing it, you know? So the mm-hmm. same the same applies to communities as well. If you want to build a community just for the sake of it, I warn you, it you will suffer. Mm-hmm. Like so you will really suffer because this is a long time game. It's not like in a month I'm going to have a community unless you buy it, which I would highly advise against, you know? Um, mm-hmm. It's really, without passion, you really cannot do it, you know? And mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think that's great. And, and a couple more questions. The community isn't branded. It's completely standalone or is it branded? Like, does it say like, like I imagine, <laughs> I don't know if like Alpo dog food mm-hmm. wanted to do this. I have to imagine they like spend a lot of time on their own Instagram, like Alpo's official Instagram, which probably isn't as fun as like German shepherds, you know, our awesome club. Um, in what direction did you go? Is it like a branded or is it more general that is sort of separate one degree of separation from your actual company? 
it is a niche that you can within you can bring your product. So basically, mm. uh, what I I managed to do is bringing up niches that I know that people are interested in. And also, it's like not only that. Okay, I thought that this might work, and I am passionate about. No, it also has to be like the numbers has to be there. So it has to be passion. But if there's like people are not searching for that specific niche, for example, like you were saying, dogs. Here it can be really well. A, dog breed you know and then you're going to go and research okay on instagram which one has the ma- most hashtags so it's also the data behind it's not only like i'm passionate about this if it's not working like you know obviously it didn't work because either you were only passionate or the only di- data driven so it has to be both mm-hmm. does it answer yeah yeah so for anyone listening out there you know they're selling on Amazon, what advice would you have for them if they're sitting there and they're sort of scratching their head and they're wondering like, is this a traffic source I should invest in? What kinds of things do you have to say to them to help them make that decision? First of all, find out where do you place yourself? Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm just looking to my Mac here. Maybe you're very into gears or gadgets or whatever. Maybe you're a musician. Maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you're a dog parent or cat parent or whatever. Take the niche and see where is the most data and see how, how can I bring my product here. So there's no such thing as my product doesn't fit somewhere. Maybe you're selling the clear the shower curtains or let's let's put it that way it doesn't really matter if you can bring to someone who's interested within your audience about things that that shower curtain could actually help with maybe it's not only about shower curtains you know but it's like uh, maybe it's bedroom ideas or bedroom design ideas or something like that that's really niche you know that's also not only really niche but also has a, a very high amount of keywords similar to what's happening on amazon as well like ppc wise right it's a great niche but also it's like not not everyone is doing it you know so just niche down and look this is a great way to actually bring your product within a community that already is there because think of it this, this way, you're not going to build up everything from zero. Whenever you're going to go and find a platform, right? Doesn't matter which one it is. I would highly suggest to go and see where your audience, the current audience you have is on already now and see within that platform, okay, hashtags, okay? And then you're seeing, okay, which one is the highest amount of hashtag and would fit within your niche. And then just look at what everyone else is doing it inspires them can inspire them see how can you bring your let's say shower curtain or garlic press or whatever within that niche you know i, I think that also it doesn't really matters as much about the product as i was saying let's let's take the the garlic the garlic press example now that's the product that everyone is like you know promoting because everyone's doing garlic presses right here what i would suggest why not start a kitchen brand or, or a kitchen account or a kitchen community or something like that something that's very really like hey you can use that tool all over the time you know and let's let's say if your uh, garlic press is a pink one or a sparkling one or whatever it's like it should be special still it's not just the only garlic press you know it should still attract attention and then you can use it really well on like how do you do i don't know pizza or i, I don't know like find a topic that you're passionate about and you actually know about as well you can also find content about and just plug your product there very naturally it doesn't have to be salesy that's the best technique how i also found to go about it whenever i tried to be salesy it didn't work so make it as natural as possible does it make sense absolutely yeah and and i I imagine for the right kind of company this is like a no-brainer um because there's a lot of things that people gravitate towards on social media Mm -hmm. Uh, so that makes total sense i'm thinking of my own experience uh like i play classical guitar and i am following a page classical guitar memes on instagram Mm -hmm. and it's just like funny memes about classical guitar Uh, i think the person makes some of their own and as well as they reshare others Mm -hmm. but like every once in a while i think there might be like an affiliate link or something like that to like a guitar strings and there's no reason why this person also couldn't like make their own guitar strings or their own guitar related products and like instantly put it in front of like people that are actively looking for stuff about classical guitar Uh, michael can i ask you a question like why would you buy from them though and not from someone else Mm. Uh, well, in this specific case that I was talking about, uh, I haven't changed my classical guitar strings in too long, so I'm just not in the market for classical guitar strings right now. But um, 
Yeah, I probably would consider the brand that they're talking about when it comes time for me to, to buy them. Um, Okay. But, do, you, um, do you want me yeah. to give you hints? <laughs> Because I wanted yeah, to yeah, get give, somewhere. Give it to me. Give yeah, it to so me. So I was thinking, you know, you see them all the time. What we are, you, what we are doing with communities is nothing else but building trust. Mm. I've seen you so often. It doesn't really matter what else someone is talking about, saying about you. I love you so much that I'm going to trust you. You know, and mm -hmm. I'm not even going to uh, question. That, that what you are bringing to me is not the right thing, you know? So here yeah. also, as you were saying, it's like guitar means and so on, you already built up. This is the beauty of community, right? You're, you're building up such a like, it's very intimate and you don't re even realize that it's there, right? You build up trust, mm -hmm. you know? So this is like just to what you were saying about the, the guitar means and so on. That's, that's, I think that's something that, <sighs> If you don't have passion about it, you cannot build up trust because people will know that you have something like uh, on the back of your mind that is like, hey, these these people want to sell me something or want to, you know? So this is mm -hmm. why I think th that's something that people are missing. Yeah, this is fascinating. Because especially like for the right kind of person, this is incredibly energizing. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people with kind of, when it comes to PPC, they view it as like an energy draining type activity. Mm -hmm. But for the right kind of person, like building a community and like looking for memes and like tips for just to support your industry, it's going to be like very energizing for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to, uh, well, I have to imagine the time frame to get something ramped up. If somebody started today, the speed at which they could you know, extract value, I guess you would say, is going to be not immediate. There will be some investment that you need to make. And I guess, you know, people are clear on that, but your own judgment is that that investment is well worth it yeah. over time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And also maybe you can learn from my mistakes if I would have done, I could have done better because like I built up like different communities as well, you know, in different niches. What I noticed that more you post then higher the engagement rate and also if you're being there all the time and, and really pro providing quality content, people will notice that. So that also can really like bring up a lot your profile. It doesn't have to be six months, 12 months, two years, you know, it can be way faster. It's just like, knowing exactly what you want. If that's what you want to build up fast your profile and fast your community, you can do. But don't don't forget that you're, what you're building up, it's trust. It's not necessarily like numbers, you know? And trust can be gained only with time. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, so Naomi, people can find you on the Wizards of E-Commerce podcast. Yes. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to mention here for our audience? Where else they can find you? Um, no, I think that would be the best way. So we have a very, very active Telegram chat called uh, AmazonGroupChat.com. And that's somewhere where I am most of the time. You know, Carlos is there most of the time. Most of our wizards are there most of the time. And they are super like, uh, we're doing a very, very similar thing to what Michael is doing. Only that we are not doing only for PPCers or PPC lovers, but for e-com lovers in general, you know? So we are on the same concept of, in your case, PPCers helping PPCers. In our case, sellers helping sellers. Awesome. Well, Naomi, thank you so much. Have a good one. And I'll see everybody else here next week in the PPC Den podcast. Thank you. Bye-bye.